Mark Rober just released his latest glitter bomb video, and as usual, there's an impressive amount of planning and engineering that goes into his design. But it can be a little intimidating if you'd like to pull this prank this holiday season, but you don't really have the time or the engineering know-how to build something that complicated. In this video, I'll show you how to build a simple circuit that you can use to build a basic glitter bomb without all the bells and whistles. Now, the basic mechanism of a glitter bomb is a spinning funnel that disperses the glitter. To make something spin, you need a motor. It's relatively simple to build a basic circuit with a motor that turns the motor on when the lid of a box opens using something called a limit switch. You can see I'm holding this switch down, which simulating what would happen if it was crammed inside a box with the lid of the box pressing it down. When I release the switch, this motor is going to turn on. However, that creates a problem. The motor is going to turn on as soon as the lid of the box starts to open. That means the lid of the box is still going to be partially closed, deflecting a lot of the glitter down into the box. Ideally, you would like to wait until the lid of the box is open all the way, exposing the room for maximum glitter damage. We can accomplish that using the venerable 555 timer, a popular integrated circuit that can be used for applications such as generating a square wave to blink an LED without requiring use of a microcontroller. Other examples include generating a fixed duration output pulse in response to an input. For example, turning this LED on for a fixed amount of time even after I've released this button. To accomplish our goal, we'll use the timer in a delayed power on mode. I've now wired this switch in series with the 9 volt battery to provide power to the circuit. You'll see that when I turn the switch on, there's a several second delay before the LED turns on. The length of the delay is determined by the values of the external resistor and capacitor. For our glitter bomb, we'll want to replace this slide switch with a limit switch and this LED with a motor. The only other modification we'll make is that the output of the 555 timer is not really designed to drive a motor directly. That requires too much current, so to do that, we'll use a transistor. So let's see that in action one component at a time. Here I've added an extra battery pack to give a little more juice to my motor. I've added a transistor to drive the motor using the 555 timer's output, and you'll see that when I turn the switch on, it takes a few seconds before the motor turns on. But again, you don't want a slide switch, you want a limit switch that you can mount on the inside of the box. So here's the limit switch. Imagine that this is inside the lid of the box, the lid gets opened, wait a few seconds, then your unsuspecting victim will fall prey to your glitter. Now, obviously this is all a little bulky because I have built it on a big breadboard as a demonstration here, but you can imagine how you could shrink this down and either, either solder the components or use a smaller breadboard, then fit everything inside a box, and again, you would need a little cone to actually disperse the glitter when the motor starts spinning. Now, let's take a look at the circuit diagram for those of you who would actually like to build this, and if you just go Google 555 timer delay on or delay power on circuit, you will find plenty of these. So we have our 555 timer, that is going to need power. You can check the 555 data sheet, but I think it can be powered by anything up to 18 volts. So pin one goes to ground. Pin two is connected to your capacitor and your resistor. That RC value is going to determine the duration of the delay. The bigger the R and C values, the longer the delay. So the capacitor goes up to B plus, the resistor goes down to ground. Pin two is also tied over to pin six. Pin 3 is your output, that's going to go over to the motor, we'll talk about that in a minute. Pin 4 goes to V+, pin 8 goes to V+, pins 5 and 7 are unused. Your output, pin 3, again is not really designed to supply enough current to drive a large motor on its own. So to do that you need a transistor, I have a MOSFET here. It's good practice to throw in a flyback diode when you're driving a motor, I was lazy and did not do that in my breadboard. And then you have your motor connected to your power supply. Again, depending on the size of your motor you're driving, you usually would have a separate bigger power supply for your load than you would have for your logic or your integrated circuit. So I should have used a different subscript or something here. This was actually a different battery pack in my circuit. And your motor is only going to turn on when this output goes high and drives the transistor. And finally, if you are not that comfortable reading a circuit diagram, here you can see a screenshot of the same circuit built in Tinkercad. So this shows you a view of the breadboard diagram. You can find a link to this circuit in the description below the video. Now, if you have watched this far, you may be disappointed that you didn't actually get to see a glitter bomb go off, but I didn't want to get glitter all over my own office, and I live in a cold climate, so I wasn't really in a hurry to go film this outside in December. So I apologize, but hopefully you've gained enough knowledge that you can now go build one of these yourself. 
So I hope you found that helpful. If you have a question, go ahead and leave a comment below the video. And if you do this to your friends and family as a joke this Christmas, please be nice and help clean up. Thank you.